His love for us. Yes, He has a reckless love for each individual person today. We're glory to God. Uh, you can be seated right now. I want to give all glory and praise and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, Heavenly Father. I also want to give honor to my wife, glory to God. Always being by my side, glory to God. Thank you, thank you. Uh, also, just want to welcome each one of y'all. My name is Pastor Travis from Faithfield Community Church. Uh, spent a long time with Pastor Stan, Minister Tony, uh, with Pastor Tony, and everyone here that I know and see. Good to see everyone's face. Uh, but I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right into the Word of God. So before we do, if we can just bow our heads, uh, we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for this day in which you have made. We're truly glad and rejoice in it. We thank you right now for who you are, Father. You are a good and an awesome God. We ask that your word goes forth unhindered today, that your people's lives are changed, that they're saved, that they're made different, that they're made better, Father. And I ask that my preaching and teaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it's in demonstration of your power and of your spirit. And we just ask right now that we're not only hearers of your word, but we're doers also. Everybody agree with that in Jesus' name. Let them say amen. 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 Well, praise God. Let's start off with our foundation of Scripture, which can be found in Luke chapter 18, verse number 8. Again, that's Luke chapter 18, verse number 8. And it reads, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on earth? So today I want to minister on faith. Uh, I know since this is Faith Family Church, how many of y'all we have faith out there? Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. So then if Jesus asked the question, will the Son of Man find faith on earth? A lot of us are here because of what? Our faith. We're here watching online because of one thing, our faith. But I have a question for you. What is faith? Any of us that have been in faith family long enough, we know Pastor Stan preached on it. Faith is what? A firm persuasion. So I look the word up, faith, persuasion, that is a credence. A credence is a belief or an acceptance of something as truth. So faith is a firm persuasion. So I'm going to ask my wife there. Um, you know, in my younger days, when I was 20-something, this is my illustration, basketball, you know. You know, I get this right here, and I have faith that it doesn't matter who's in front of me. I don't care who you are. But I got that faith. Why? My persistence. I was persistent. I'm, all my buddies, everybody I know, they're taller than me. I'm 5'11 and three, three quarters. Yeah. I, I was trying to get to six foot, and it just didn't happen. You know? But everybody I know, they were. 6'3", 6'6", 6'7", 6'9", and so as a little guy, I wouldn't say I was little. I never thought I was little until, you know, everybody else taller than me. But as a little guy, I would go in there. You know, my shot getting blocked. You know, but I, was, I would keep going in, and then as I had to play defense, they're taller than me, and they, you know, they're, they're backing me down. But I never stopped because I believed one day what? I could beat them. I could beat them. You know, I stayed persistent. You know, I, I would work on, work on my game, work on my hand. You see, it's a little rusty right now. I'm a little out of shape. But I, I had faith that just give me that one opportunity, and I can beat them. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the next day, but eventually, I'm going to beat them. Now, some of y'all may feel that way about cooking. You know, I like, I like pound cake, you know. I, I put my pound cake up against anybody pound cake, you know. You know, you can go get grandma, your auntie, your auntie, or whoever, your mama. I put my pound cake up against that, and I have faith in that. Now, if you put my mother-in-law, both of us, in the kitchen to cook it at the same time, now, faith can shot through the roof. Because now I have somebody there that's going to help me. In the same way, you have somebody that's going to help you. So where did your faith come from? You know, like Timothy, did it come from your grandmother? Was it passed down from your grandmother to your mother to now you have? It? Or maybe it was, it was preached. The word was preached to you and, and, it, and it resonated in, in your spirit. 
Or maybe you're like Paul. You knew the word. Grew up in church, you knew the word, but it wasn't until you had an experience with God that, boom, man, I believe. So I ask you, you know, where did your faith come from? What do you believe? A lot of us, we just celebrated Resurrection Sunday, right? I mean, some of us, I remember I used to get nice suits and the girls would get nice dress, the Easter baskets, the whole nine. You know, if we didn't cook a big meal and invite everybody over, we went out to eat, right? And so Resurrection Sunday just passed. What do we believe? We believe what? Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, right? Died on the cross for our sins. On the third day, he rose. But Jesus asked the question, will he find faith on earth? That Resurrection Sunday, do you believe that? Of course we believe it, you know. Or we wouldn't have got dressed up, we wouldn't have came to church, we wouldn't have celebrated like we did. Why do you believe that? Do you believe everything else in the Bible? So my hope today is, by the Holy Spirit, that you'll be able to believe for anything. Why? Because one, if you give your life to Christ, you're a child of God. And two, you have somebody to help you. There's somebody that's going to help you. And so we're going to look at today's word, and we're going to look at that. We're going to look at how do we, are we able to believe for anything? How? And do we believe everything? Do you believe it? If so, there's something Jesus said. That if you believe that he is the son of God, then there's something else you should believe in as well. So let's look back at Luke 18, verse number 1. And he spake a parable unto them. To this end, that men ought to always pray and not faint. So he's saying, don't give up. Just like when I was little and everybody else was bigger than me. Don't give up. One day you're going to make that shot. Don't faint. Verse 2, saying, there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city. And she came to him saying, avenge me, my adversary. So she's saying, avenge me, this enemy of mine. And he would not for a while, but after he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So, he's not giving it to her necessarily because he wants to. He says, I have no regard for God, no regard for man, so I don't care about none of y'all. But he's saying because she's so persistent. And that's really what I I want you to be as children of God. Whatever it is in life that you're going after, I want you to be persistent about it. Because one, you're a child of God. And two, you have somebody on the inside who's there ready and willing to fight with you. Verse 6. And the Lord said here, what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? He's saying, if this unjust judge is going to do for this woman because she didn't give up, come on. How much more shall your God do for you because you haven't given up? Because of your persistency. Come on, is anything too hard for a child of God? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, will the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. So I ask you, will you do your part as a believer, as a child of God, no matter what it is you're believing for? I don't know what you're believing for, but we all should be believing for something, right? We should be walking by faith, not not by sight. The just should be living by faith. So there should be something that we're believing for, something that we're believing in. There's something right now that each one of us is dealing with. That what we need to do. What do we need to do? We need to be persistent about it. Continue to pray. If you pray, well, I pray for this thing and I haven't gotten it yet. So does that mean you stop praying and stop believing? No, we're persistent. We're persistent because we're children of God and we have somebody on the inside that is with us all the way. 
Let's look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. Matthew 21, verse 18. And so this unjust judge was able to give, avenge her of her adversary. Why? Because she refused to give up. And so in that same way, what do we need to do? Refuse to give up. No matter how tough it is, no matter what the struggle is, no matter what they're saying, no matter what they're predicting, us as children of God must be persistent and not give up. Matthew chapter 21 verse 18 reads, Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. This is Jesus. Went on his way, he's hungry. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and he found nothing thereon but leaves, and said unto let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Now, I never understood why his disciples always marveled at Jesus. I mean, we fed 3,000, we fed 5,000. Now, you got a surprise because I upped it to five. We heal this person, heal that person, now you're surprised. Walk on a little water, you're surprised. Why do we keep getting surprised with God? Why? Shouldn't we be expecting that? Oh, y'all see Jesus made that tree go away, look at it. That's nothing, man. You know, that's nothing. What is too big for your God? Take a moment, think about it. What's too big for your God? There's nothing too big. So if there's nothing too big, then what's too small for him? So then why can't we continue to believe for that thing we so desire? Why can't we continue to believe for that thing that we want or that thing that we need? Why can't we continue to believe for it? Because it wasn't microwavable? We didn't get it instantly? You know, Joseph, he, he had to wait 10 years after seeing a dream. 10 years? Come on. Some of y'all give up after 10 minutes. I'm done. I prayed about it. I'm, come on, God. That's not how it works. Persistent. Time, time, time again. Verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith, and doubt not. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not. See, doubt is like poison. So my wife, she's she a pretty good cook, you know. Actually, she's a great cook. I'm, I'm expecting something we're going to eat later. She said, I guess we're going out to eat today. But she's a great cook. If she makes some lasagna or whatever it is, some pasta, some Fettuccine Alfredo, something like that. She puts all her time and effort into it. But if she sprinkles a little bit of poison, how many of you know that whole pot is destroyed? And so that's what doubt is like to your faith. Once you allow doubt to come in, you've ruined every bit of faith you had. He says, if you have faith and doubt not, You shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done. In all things whatsoever you ask in prayer believing, you shall receive. And so this is the main thing I wanted to get to. He said, not only do this to this fig tree, come on, I mean. How many of y'all believe y'all can wither some fig trees and get them to go on out your life? Glory to God. I got some hands right there. Because I, I don't need no fruit, uh, fruitless things in my life. Come on. How many of y'all believe he said if, not only will you be able to get rid of this fruitless thing in your life, but he said you'll also be able to tell this mountain that you're trying so hard to get above, that you're trying so hard to get around, that you're trying so hard to dig your way through. He said I can, you just speak to it, cast it into the sea. But I ask you. We all came last Sunday, glory to God, Resurrection Sunday, died on the cross for my sins, got a chance at eternal life, I'm in right standing with the Father, but do you believe that you can wither that fig tree? Do you believe 
you can cast that mountain that's in your life, that's standing in the way to where you're trying to get to. Can you cast it into the sea? Jesus said you can, but do you believe it? In all things, whatever you ask, he says, pray, believing, and you shall, re- you shall receive. Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 12. I hope you're getting something today. Because I want us to get to a place where he's, he's telling us that this fig tree, that, I, that what I did, you can do too. Matter of fact, that mountain that's in your life, speak to it, and you can cast it into the sea. But you have to believe without any type of doubt. You know, people say, oh, there's a reasonable doubt. There is no doubt when it comes to God. With man, it may be impossible, but with God, glory to God. All things, all things. John chapter 14, verse 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, come on, we all came to church last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, Looking clean, looking good. Believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Do you believe that you can do the works that he did and greater? He said it in his word. He said it. But if you're going to do it, you're going to need, you're going to need one thing. You're going to need two things. First one is you're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to be persistent without any doubt. This word works. He said, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. It works. Works is an act on effort. So Jesus put in effort to wither that tree. You know how many of y'all pray? It takes some effort to pray sometimes, right? Especially a long day at work. That takes some effort, right? So anything that you're going to do, any work, and now Jesus was about his father's business. He was doing God's work. But any work that you're going to do is going to take what? Effort. It's going to take one more thing. So just hold that one more thing. And so let's just think about some of the things Jesus did. Fed 5,000, right? Healed many. How many of y'all need to be healed today? (laughs) How many of y'all... Have some mouths to feed. Come on. He says, the things that I've done, the works, you can do them. You can do these and greater. Let's look at uh, verse 16. He says, and I will pray the Father. This is the second thing you need. He said, I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And so you're going to be able to do this thing. You're going to be able to cast uh, that that mountain into the sea. You're going to be able to have that tree, that that fruitless thing in your life, wither up and go because of what? Your persistency and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's within the inside. So you have somebody there that when you're weak, come on, glory to God. He's strong. And so you're never in a place of dismay. You should never be. Why? Because we have a comforter. We have somebody. Like the disciples had Jesus right next to his side. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. So we all have mouths to feed. We all probably, if you have any kind of symptom that you're going, you're dealing with. Jesus healed people on the spot. Can you not touch yourself and heal yourself? Or are you focused on the report? Beware. What are you focused on? Jesus said, these things that I've done, you should do them in greater. So because somebody else saying there's nothing else we can do for you, but Jesus saying there's somebody else that can do something for you. Which one will you believe? Romans chapter 8, verse 30. It says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, 
Them he also called, in whom he called, them he also justified, in whom he justified, them, them he also glorified. And so I know that was like a lot. Because as I was reading, it was a lot. I'm like, man, God did a lot right there, right? And so I want to read this out the New Living Translation. It says, in having chosen them, God chose you. He called them to him. God called you to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. God gave you right standing. And having given them right standing, he gave them glory. Verse 31. So what shall them say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So if God is the one that chose us, this is what it's saying. If God chose us, if he called us, if he gave us right standing with him, self, if God done, did all these things, then who is to say that you can't have your healing? Who is to say you can't have a spouse? Who is to say you can't have children? Who is to say you can't have that job? That six-figure job, right? Come on now. Glory to God. Who the one say you can't have that bonus, that promotion, that raise? Who is the one to say that you can't have the money? Show me the money. Who's the one to say that you can't have the new house, the new car? Because he said God chose you. Not anybody else who's saying this or that and that and another. He says, God called you. Not anybody else saying this, that, and another. It says that God gave you right standing with him. Not anyone else. So who is to say that you can't have that thing that you so desire? Who is to say? (laughs) The word of God says, if God gave you all that, then if God be for you, Who can be against you? Who can be against you from getting anything that you want in your life? Who can be against that? You owning that business. Come on now. You getting that patent to whatever it is that you invented. You getting that new car with the leather seats. Because, you know, cars have changed now. They got leather seats. They cool you. Cool the seat off and heat the seat up. Come on. You get one of them real nice cars, it, when you when you get too close to the line, it'll vibrate like, oh, what's, what's going on with the seat, you know? The steering wheels warm up. You don't need to put gloves, the leather gloves on the drive anymore when it's cold. Come on. Who is to say you can't have those things? Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, (laughs) but delivered him up for all of us, for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? There's only one person that can say that you're going to have or what you can't have. Not nobody at work. Not your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your friends. You know, a lot of us say those haters. (laughs) They don't determine your persistently, you being persistent, fighting, praying, believing, Holy Spirit helping you on the inside. But God has the the last, the last say so. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Nobody can charge us with anything. Now, if you did the, the crime, You might have to do the time, but you might not. Come on, you might not. Because that crime may have been a mistake. And because of your persistence, and because of your prayer, and because of your believing, come on, God will touch that judge's heart. God will touch that jury's heart. Who 
Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died? He's not condemning us. He died for our sins. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? A tribulation, or distress, a persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Do you believe you are more than, more than a conqueror? In, in the situation that you're in right now, even though the victory is already yours, it's already been won, you may not be able to see it with your natural eye, do you believe you're more than a conqueror? Do you believe you're victorious? Then don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on the Holy Spirit on the inside. Keep fighting. Keep pushing. Verse 38, for I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Glory to God. Are you persuaded that you're more than a conqueror? Are you persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? Do you believe? Do you believe? I know we believe on the third day that Jesus Christ, he rose, you know, that he died on that cross. But do you believe those works that he did, you can do them in greater. Do you believe you can have your healing? Do you believe you can have that spouse, that child? Do you believe that one day you could be a business owner? And not just any business owner, but a, a prosperous business owner. Just like God raised his son from the dead, he wants to raise you up above what you're going through. He wants to raise you up above whatever symptom that you're dealing with or any symptom of a sickness. He wants to raise you up above that. He wants to raise you up above your naysayers. See, the word of God says he, he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Do you believe that? And so if someone's saying something about you, why do I need to say something back? Because God already told me what he's going to do to you, brother. you about to be that footstool. Come on. But the question is, do you believe? I'm going to end you with this last passage. Luke chapter 11, verse 5. This is the last passage. And this is just, I guess, put the icing on the cake. It says, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. I better not have any friends coming to me asking for no three loaves in the middle of the night. <laughs> not at no midnight. But look what he says. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. So he's saying, if you have a friend. And needed some loaf of bread because they're getting ready to have company. The store's closed at 12 a.m. They're going to come to you, hey, 12 a.m. and knock on my door. Whew. How many of y'all going to stay in the bed while they still knocking? Boom, boom, boom. Now nah, we getting up, right? And so he's saying, he says, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend. You're not rising because that's your friend. Because a lot of us look and see that phone call from our friend. A lot of us got the doorbell ring. Oh, nope, not home. <laughs> so you're not going to rise at 12 a.m. because that's your friend. Why are you going to rise? Because of his importunity. He will rise and give him as many as he needed because of he's not going to give up. He's going to be at that door. <laughs> because I have something I have to pre prepare. I have a guest that's coming. And I got to make sure they're fed. The stores are closed, but I have a friend. In that same way, 
Not the friend that's opening the door, but the friend knocking at the door. That's you. Beat on that door. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh, receive, and he that seeketh, findeth, and he that knocketh, it shall be opened. Not because that's your friend, but because you're persistent. I'm not going to give up until I have this thing. I'm not going to give up. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Child of God, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. There. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to send a comforter. When you're in that place where it's like, I don't, where's that friend that I need to lean on? Or where's that shoulder I need to cry on? He said, I'm going to send you the comforter that's going to help you get to that place, to help you get over that mountain. No, 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 no. To get you around that mountain. No, 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 no. To get you through that mountain. No, no, no. To get you to the place to where you can believe to speak life into your life. And you take that mountain and you cast it into the sea. Amen. Matthew 7, 11 says, And then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good gifts, good things, to them that ask him? And so, if the Holy Spirit is a good thing, and if you haven't asked for it, then you haven't received it. And so I want to take this opportunity. I hope and pray that you receive something today. I hope and pray that now that when you're believing for something, I'm going to be a little more persistent. Matter of fact, I'm going to be persistent to the, pl- to the point where I don't give up. Because I have somebody who called me. I'm an elect. I'm a child of God. I have something on the inside that I'm not only fighting by myself, but they're fighting with me. There's no need to get down and sad about what's in front of me, but it's a point for me to get excited about that that's in front of it. Because as children of God, we're more than conquerors. And so I want to take this opportunity, I want to take this time, uh, if you can bow your head, you can close your eyes, I want to pray for that person who hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, maybe you didn't come to church last Sunday, you know, maybe you don't believe in the resurrection. Or maybe you don't believe that those things that Jesus said that he did, that you can do those in greater. You know, I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. Or maybe you haven't received the Holy Spirit. You know, I was baptized as a child, but I don't remember ever receiving the Holy Spirit. And I need help to get me to that place that I need to be. I need help removing these mountains. I need help withering these trees. I want to pray with you and for you. And if that's you online as well, I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. While every head's bowed and every eye's closed, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And those that do believe, you already accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And you already accepted the Holy Spirit. I want you to repeat after me just to help encourage those who may not have. So repeat that after me. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart that you sent your Son to die on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you rose him from the grave. And he's alive. And I ask right now in Jesus' name that you send the Holy Spirit to live big on the inside, to lead, to guide, to comfort me right now in Jesus' name. And help me, Father, to remove those fruitless trees and remove those mountains in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone believe that? Let them say amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. I really encourage you. Be persistent. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter the height. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on the Holy Spirit. 
you can do it. Before I let you go, I do want to pray a blessing over you. So if I can have all of you rise, lift your hands to the Father. And as I pray over you, I say, the Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless. You are dismissed. Know that I love you and God loves you. Hope to see you next time.